Hello, everyone. Welcome to our video and um, of interviewing. Um, so, welcome to Anglican a uh, Young Anglican Theology Project. And um, this realm and this new cycle is about expressing the sacred. And I'm a Reverend Ian Chen. I based in Shropshire in England, and I'm the ordained uh, priest in the Church of England, and also teaching uh, theology in the Diocese of Taiwan. And tonight, we are happy to have Emily Grace Sainsbury to join us, and she would like to share and talk about her artwork uh, tonight. So, um, Emily Grace, how are you? And hope you can introduce yourself a bit. Hello. Yeah, I'm well, thank you. Um, as you said, my name is Emily Grace. I am 23, and I live in Camberley in Surrey. Um, I've lived there for the last two years, but I was born in Sheffield, so quite a lot further up north. Uh, and I grew up in Leicestershire, so I've spent most of my life in in Leicestershire. Uh, and I'm I'm slowly working my way uh, down unintentionally. Um, I'm training for ordination, but prior to that, uh, my background I undertook a degree in comedy. Um, and then I worked in a Catholic Franciscan convent and retreat center for two and a half years, uh, during which I went through the, the formal discernment process. Um, it's a somewhat unusual background, um, but I'm passionate about the way in which um, spirituality, creativity and God's creation relate to each other. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, we talk about expressing the sacred. So would you like to define um, define how, uh, the, a sacred space? What does that really mean to you? And or what does the sacred mean? Mm. Yeah, so sacred spaces, I think, are spaces um, for connection. So whether somewhere has um, been labelled as such because of a particular historical event uh, or if it's been intentionally created, whichever, um, it relies on the way it's inhabited. Um, so many people will express experiences uh, of what Celtic spirituality calls thin spaces. And yet, as Christians, we believe that God is omnipotent, uh, so in all places, sacred and secular. Um, so perhaps the place is a stimulus. It inspires us so that we are the ones who really become a spiritually thin place where the Holy Spirit within us can come to the surface. Mm. Yeah, thanks. So I know that your hour was called Tabernacle. So would you like to introduce that work and and it is commissioned to 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 be an a work and to place in the chapel. But what's really motivates and motivates you and inspire you to make this work? Mm, yeah, so it is a, a log-shaped um tabernacle that is installed in the creation chapel at the, the convent where I used to work. Um in terms of the commission itself, it was literally just to make it look as much like a log as I could and um, to have the, the earth engraved on the front. Um, and so I think in the same way that I um, have spoken about place as a, um, as a, a stimulus uh, for connection, I think the art has that same uh, potential. And so... I'm actually particularly inspired by a piece of scripture, um, Matthew chapter 13. Uh, there's a whole range of, of parables, but I'm paraphrasing, but a couple of verses um, basically say that Jesus uh, only spoke in, in parables and that they would like utter things um, hidden since the creation of the world. Um, I think, well, God is greater than the limitations of our human language, um, unable to be fully described in words. Um, but there is something new revealed in imagery 
Jesus relies on the emotional understanding of experience. Um, it kind of reminds me of the, the question, you know, how would you describe a colour to somebody who is blind? You know, it requires you to relate to other senses. Red's not like an apple, but red is the heat of the sun, um, the intensity of love and anger. Um, creativity communicates as music, icons, um, or a log tabernacle. Yeah, thanks. So, 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 yeah. So, if we were looking at on the other side, what would you, what would you want people to feel and perceive when they are looking at when they are looking at this tabernacle, this the your artwork tabernacle? Hmm. Yeah, as I say, we we obviously can't express the immensity of of God within the limits of any earthly mediums, and so I find that focusing on on one aspect of God. Um, of God's identity in my work makes it more impactful, uh, a quality over quantity approach, if you will. The tabernacle obviously particularly focused on God, the creator, um, as it was commissioned for the creation chapel, but it was also such an impactful experience for me because this is the character of God that I um, most often am drawn to. So holding that together, my personal spiritual inspiration um, and the way it might be understood by others has been a really thought provoking process. Um, originally, I was going to use John 1.3, um, through him all things were made, on uh, the shelf that goes with the tabernacle. It was for me a reminder of Christ who is overall through all and in all um however um, i was speaking to one of the sisters in the process and she expressed that for her the verse instead drew the focus away from the cosmic nature of god that was being expressed uh, in that space and actually towards the the male incarnation of jesus so it, it now reads, um, in the beginning, God created the, the artist. Um, I understand that I have a responsibility, as I do when I'm preaching, uh, to consider the possible interpretations that are not my intention. Um, but ultimately, what is, is felt and perceived now that it's complete um, is not something I want to be too precious over. It's as I say, a, a stimulus and the relationship, what is felt um, is between the, the visitor and the spirit, I hope. Yeah, thank you. So really, really great, great reflection, I think. And so so based on that, what would you what would you say about your work, your artwork expressing uh, your Anglican spirituality or your understanding of Anglican spirituality and even for the future of Anglican theology? Mm. Um, yeah, so I think that's really interesting because the piece um, in its function as a, a tabernacle um, reflects a rather Anglo-Catholic spirituality, uh, yet I wouldn't um, necessarily identify as Anglo-Catholic. Um, neither would I claim to be anywhere else, particularly strongly on the, the spectrum of Anglicanism. Um, I am a, an Anglican because of the breadth of traditions and cultures across the Anglican communion, which I think at its best honours the individuality of faith and relationship. Um, it includes a diverse range of ways that people connect and relate to God, be that incense, contemporary music, candles, physical responses like dance or the raising of arms you know um because of this characteristic of anglicanism my identity was really strengthened working in the retreat center um which though part of a, a roman catholic franciscan convent um welcomed all denominations and traditions um nathan my husband uh, and i um 
make all different sorts of woodcraft, spirituality, um, resources, things together. Um, and we really love it when folk suggest their own ideas um, for our spiritual creations. Um, even just a potential spiritual quote for our reclaimed wooden wall hangings. Um, my hope for the next generation of Anglican theologians is that the blessing that is the diversity of our of our you know the gifts of our worship styles of our different contemplative practices of each generation and of each individual um I hope that 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 is honored and that we might learn from each other um as different parts of one body of Christ wow thank you for the really 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 nice and deep reflection and um, really thank you for your time Amity Grace and also thank, thank you, you for everyone listen to this interview and I hope you are experiencing some secrets when you are looking at Amity Grace our word the tabernacle thank you thank you